hello and welcome. Um, today is going to be kind of a two-parter video. The first part is going to be me doing a swipe with blues and then swiping with white. And then the second half is going to be me adding fabric to it. Um, for the swipe that's going on right now, I want kind of a wintry scene. I marked off with some masking tape where I kind of want the blues to end and the white to start. Um, I will list all the colors down in the description box below. And let's get started. I have a few different shades of blue going on. And I hope I have enough to cover. Gonna save a little bit of that. Um, next I'll move on to this the lightest blue I have. I'm going to save a little bit of that blue too. I'll do my darkest blue next. I did put a drop of Artist Loft silicone in each of the blues. And I am working on a 16 by 20 canvas. Dark blue is done. Um, I'll move on to the second lightest. I do have some metallic colors that I set off to the side. I'm not quite sure if I want to use them or not, but we'll see. what color next. Um, I'll do a, it's kind of a medium blue. do I believe this is more of a turquoise color but I like it so it's going on some of this. I believe this is the cerulean blue. And 
I think I'm going to, before I add any more color, I'm going to tilt it first a little bit to get it spread around. And make sure you're still recording. Yes. Okay. And go ahead and turn it around this way so it's easier for me to tilt. Just moving it back and forth trying to get the holes covered. This way a little bit. Get as close to that tape as I can. hands real quick and I'm going to try to cover up the sides. And I will add a little bit more of that dark blue. And I might do some of the metallic colors. Just a little bit though. Um, I did not add any silicone into these though. And the light metallic blue. Most of these are either apple barrel or folk art paints. There are a few that are from Artist Law for Liquitex Basics. I did mix up some silver, but I'm not going to use it. And I have some pearl white that I'm going to use. Just a little bit. Let me see if I can pour a little bit more of the kind of aqua color in a few spots and that should be good all right I'm gonna pause you lift up this tape and get set up for the swipe all right so I'm just gonna go ahead and add my white
Now this isn't a pure white. It was mixed with some Artist Loft parchment, I believe it was called. So it's a little off-white. I'm going to make sure I get everything covered again. Okay, so I'm sorry about that. My camera cut off, but I went ahead and covered it with white. Now I'm going to swipe. And I'm going to have to do this in two sections. I'm going to start just... I'm not going to go up here because I still want this white. So I'm going to start just a little bit above where the blue starts. I'm going to throw this in the sink and grab my other sheets. And I'm going to overlap just a little bit. Alright, I'm going to give it a torch. my little torch and see if I can get in a few areas. I'm halfway done to the swipe again on this side. I'm not happy with it. Just a little bit. I'm not happy with that side at all. Now, am I going to mess it up? Probably. Should just leave it alone, but I don't like it. I don't know if that's going to make it any better or not. I'm going to grab my bigger torch. That's it for a few minutes. Pause you guys and then I'll take you down for a close-up. Alright, so here we are in the close-up. I let it sit for about five minutes. It 
Sides look kind of different, but I guess you can't have matching sides all the time, but I'm still getting the effect I was kind of going for, so. All right, well, this concludes this part of this video. I'm going to have to wait until this completely dries, and then I'll start on the second part. All right, and we are back for the second part of this project. The materials I am using are Heat and Bond Light. I believe it still comes in this color packaging. I have cut out a Christmas tree out of cardstock. I have put a line so I know where my center is at. I have also done that with the Heat and Bond. I have cut up varying pieces of fabric at one inches for the width. The lengths are a little different, but the length's not what is important. And you can do it one inches, you can do, you know, however, what width you want it to be. So you get an idea of what we are going for. I did a little test piece. Don't pay attention. I didn't really care too much about the fraying and stuff, which once you get to the actual project, you need to pay attention to your fraying. I am using a clover seam iron. I have the flat tip on there. You could use a regular one. It might be slightly difficult, but you can do it. Let me move this out of the way. And I want to have these cut at an angle. I already cut a few of them. It doesn't really matter the angle you cut them at as long as they're at an angle. I've been kind of going for the 30 degree angle. This is one I had folded in half, so now I have a piece for one side and a piece for another side. And as you go along, you might have to, you know, adjust your angles. That's why I said it doesn't really necessarily matter the angle. So, okay. Now I'm going to bring take this off, bring my board back, and then again this is probably going to be the top and this will be the bottom. So, Alright, move that out of the way so it doesn't get ruined. So, I just have to decide what fabric I'm going to start with. And I want these to be offset, so I'll show you. Hopefully, let me get this a little bit closer. Here, let me pause. I need to rearrange. Alright. So, first I'm going to look at my strip of fabric. And there is some fraying on the side. A little loose, so... I'm going to do my best to trim those off. Okay. So I'm going to start on this side, and I found it easier to use a little needle or whatever because my fingers are a little pudgy so and I'm going to line this up where I want it I'm going to start pretty much almost off the edge to get that one started as 
offset. I'm just going to use that needle to hold it in place. And use the iron. I have it at medium. And I can remove that once it's set. Try to get a good angle here. And just iron it down. There you go, there's the first one. There is still a little bit of fraying. Let me grab my smaller scissors. Those are a little clunky. Just gonna get this little piece right here. Go back down with the iron to get it sealed. Alright, so now we're ready for our next piece. And I'm going to use this one. Oops. Let me get some of these frayed pieces off again. These aren't really fabric scissors. There we go. Now you could, before you cut your strips, of course you could use heat and bond. Put, you know, <clears throat> a decent amount of fabric on there, glue it down, and then cut it into your one in strips, but then you might run into a problem of it being too much glue once you get to this step and the glue seeping through, but you could still do it. <clears throat> you would just have to pay attention to how long and how hot your iron's on there. So let's move to the second piece. This one I'm going to start just a little bit below the first one. So it's offset just a little bit. And set it with the iron to get it started. And then I can remove my little needle. First row done. Okay, so next I will probably use this black. Once again, check. Unfortunately, I have handled these fabrics quite a bit since they've been cut, so they're getting frayed. Once again, grab my needle, move it up to my center over here, find that center, set my piece. Okay, and now once you get to this part, you have a decision to make. You can go a little bit overlap of the fabric before, or you can try to get it lined up as close as you can to the fabric, and that's what I'm going to try to do. Now this might take a little bit longer to do to make sure that 
everything is lined up correctly. There's that one. And let's see. Let's do and let's do a green. Let's get in grab my little needle here. Get it lined up. Set it. Move your needle. Let me try to angle this a little bit better so you can see what I'm doing here. Let me try this corner right here is a little, try to get that down, just to make sure everything's down, yes it is, alright, let's see, I'm gonna do this side again, My little needle go. Okay, I think you guys get the general idea of what I am doing. I'm going to go ahead and pause you guys and continue to do this. So, see you back in a minute. Alright, I'm just at the halfway point. And I forgot to, I messed up when I said that the strips were cut uh, at an inch wide. They are actually only a half inch. So I apologize for that. But once again, you can have them at an inch if you prefer. I wouldn't suggest going any smaller than a half inch. Um, then it might get a little bit more difficult to work with or even cutting them into strips and keeping them from fraying as much. Um, I will also say that if you haven't worked with heat and bond before, um, there is no really fixing a mistake really with this stuff. When so you pull a strip, the glue will come off, and you'll basically have to start all over with a fresh sheet. 
So I just wanted to throw that in too. So there's the halfway point and I'll see you in a few. Alright, so I'm back and I have finished the tree. This is the one you've seen me working on. I wasn't that thrilled with it, so I made a new one. Same technique, I just wasn't thrilled with the first one. I also made a tree trunk to go on there. I made up a few. I wasn't quite sure which ones I was going to use, but I decided to go with that one. I also made up a few extra things to go on, some snowflakes, a star for the tree, and then some presents to put around on this part down here. Now to adhere all this stuff to the canvas, I am just going to be using some Mod Podge. Of course you could use craft glue, I did bring this out in case I wanted to use it, but I think I'm just going to use the Mod Podge. And all I'm going to do is take this backing off from the heat and bond, if I can. Trimmed off all my nails. Alright, here we go. And then let me move my board over the canvas so I don't get it all over. And then all I'm going to do is get a little bit on of the Mod Podge on my brush and just get a light coating. And then I kind of already put a pencil mark where I want my tree trunk to start. So I'm just going to set it down. Get it as even as possible. And there we go. And I do have some strands that once it dries, I will fix. I don't want to mess with it right now since it's wet. And you can even take your hands under the canvas and kind of press it down. So yeah, that's all I'm going to do is just put the mod on the back of these and place them where I want them and I'll be back. Alright, I'm back and it is all finished. Um, I did end up switching over to the Elmer's Craft Bond Glue. It was just easier to manage and I used a popsicle stick to spread it out. Um, once I got everything on there, I laid down some wax paper, flipped it over, laid some things down to weight it, and let it sit overnight. And everything's dry, everything's stuck. So yeah, um, at the end of this video I will include some pictures of close-ups so you can get a better idea of the Christmas tree. Um, I did want to show, I did this project a few years back. Um, this is where the inspiration for this current project came from. Um, so yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this. I enjoyed making it, and thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.